Thank you again all for joining. So as I said, we will firstly talk about the telephony terminology and understanding what we mean when we talk about hunt groups, VDNs and DNSs and distribution groups because you'll all have different PBXs that will have different terminology about what they are. What we're then going to do is really understand how to investigate a test call. Okay, what we mean by this is what information can you get from Tiger to allow you to generate the reports that you need. Now, some phone systems will not allow you to see certain bits of information. They don't output that information. Therefore, Tiger can't help you in, in those instances. But what we will do though is show you how to get all the information out that your PBX provides to us. What we also look at is filtering and how we can filter on these hunt groups and then finally what we'll do is we'll look at what reports can be run on the 2020 system to give you all that information. So I'm just going to take a few minutes just to talk about hunt groups um, and what different types there are. So the main one is, is a hunt group. Okay. So a hunt group in telephony is a distribution of calls. So this is where the call gets distributed from a single number to a group or several phones. What it will mean is people can pick up calls from that group of numbers. The next thing is response group. Now, response group is a, um, a Microsoft link term or Skype for business, and it's the same as a hunt group. They just call them something different. It's a response group, um, and it's how it hunts the calls or distributes the calls to different people. So I may mention response group. They are pretty much the same as hunt groups. They're just a different way that Microsoft has called hunt groups. The next thing we'll talk about is DNIS numbers. So what is DNIS numbers? Well, it stands for Dial Number Identification Service. So what this is in determining which number was dialed to get into your network. So it may mean that you want to know how many times an external party has called a particular number. So understanding that element of it as well. Now, the reason I've included this in hunt groups is because you may have the external number pointing to an internal hunt group, but your phone system doesn't support hunt groups. So you can do it in a slightly different way. And then finally is VDN numbers. These are vectory directory numbers. Again, this just allows the different terminology of hunt groups and understanding how the calls get distributed around a group of people. So what we want to understand is how can we make a test call and how can we get all the information out of Tiger 2020 Pro to show which columns of information are available to then allow us to run specific reports. To do this, the first thing that you'll need to do is pick up a phone within your building or maybe your mobile phone and make a test call into the hunt group. So once you've made a call into the hunt group, Make sure somebody answers that call and make sure that you get the extension number of the person who answered it and also make sure that you get the date and the time that the call was made. This way, when you come into Tiger 2020 Pro, you'll be able to find that call much easier. So we have made a test call into the phone system and we know who it was answered by. So what we can now do is we can now generate a report to find out what information is available to us. So the first thing that we will do is we will pick the date the test call was made on. So as a bit of advice here, you can right click between these calendars here and you can choose predefined date. So if you made a call today, you can quickly right click between the calendars and select today. Or if you know the date that you made the call on, you can define the date that the call was made. You may then want to limit down which hour that the call was made. So if I know that the call was made between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., I can then specify the date and the time. If you really want to limit down these calls, because there could be thousands or tens of thousands of calls, even between this hour period, you could do a quick filter, either on the extension number that you called or on the number that you called in with. In my instance, I am going to say I don't want the filter because I'm not 100% sure on where the call went. Now, once I've selected my date and my time and my filter here, I then would like to define which report I'm going to run. 
Now, for any forensic investigation, I would always recommend the call information report. The call information report is the report that will give the most amount of information available in the system. So to select this report, simply click on the dot here and select call information. I would also recommend while you're doing forensic investigation to select your view to physical. So once you've selected your date, your times, your view, and we've selected the call information report, we will then generate the report to find all of the calls. Now, within the call information report, you can enable many columns. To do this, simply right click anywhere in the screen and click display columns. Within here, you have just over 200 columns of information that are available that you can turn on and turn off. Now, please note that not all of these fields will be populated with information. It all depends on your PBX. So this is why we're using this report to find out what your PBX has given us. So you may want to enable every single column in here just to see what information it's given you. To turn columns on and off, you just simply click in the box to turn the columns on and then click OK. To disable columns, you can untick the boxes and click OK also. Or if you see a column that maybe doesn't have any information in, you can right click on this column and click hide column here. Also within this window, you are able to reorder columns by simply dragging and dropping the columns into the order that you wish to see them in. So what we want to do is investigate a particular call. So I've looked at the call and I've gone, ah, that there is my inbound number that I made the test call from. So this is the call that I'm interested in. Now I can go across the line and I can see, yep, I called 891085, which was the agent that picked up my call. So I know this is the correct call. So what can I do at this point? Well, what you can do to make life a bit easier is you don't want to see all these other calls that are available in this window because that may be a bit confusing. So what you can do is you can right click on this call here and find related calls by either Tiger Linkage ID or by Switch Call ID. I'm going to select Tiger Linkage ID here. What it will now go and do is go and find all calls that relate to that specific call. So what this is showing is, is cradle to grave of where the call went. Okay, so it will show where the call started and where the call ended. So I can see that there were four calls on this specific call. The first one being a no ring, then it got answered at this point here. Then it was continued over to this one here where it was a no answer and then was finally connected here. Now that gives me all the information about what happened on the call. What I would like to know now though is did that call go through any hunt groups or any DNS numbers or any VDN? So to find out this information we can scroll across to the right hand side until we come to some important numbers here. Okay. It looks like that come out of order. Just select ID on this. Make sure I've got the right one. Four. Yeah. So we talked earlier about DNS numbers. So in my instance here, we weren't given the DNS number. So we weren't given the number that was run externally to get through to um, this hunt route. But we do get the hunt route that the call went to. So I can see here. It went to two separate hunt groups. So it went to hunt group one, and then it went to another hunt group here. So this allows me to see, ah, I know those calls went into a hunt group. Therefore, I am now able to run a report on a particular hunt group to find out what information is going on in that hunt group. Now, you may want to find out a bit more information on these calls. So you could look at maybe where it was transferred from and to. So I could see here that it went to the hunt group. So it went to hunt group 085. It was picked up by an agent on 091 who then put it through to the hunt group 056. And then it ended up going into this hunt group here. Now with more complex systems where it may jump into multiple hunt groups, you may see 10 or 12 legs 
as part of this call. Okay? But at least it's easy to understand when you have it on a page like this about how the call is moving through your telephony network. If at any point you would like to then maybe export this information, you can do this by simply right clicking anywhere in the grid and clicking export to file, clicking export, and then you can save this to anywhere on your PC and just give this a name here and it will then export that information to the location you specified and you could open this up in Excel and maybe you could email this to a particular person that needed to know all this information. Just a note for all of you using iTiger, when you right click and export to file and you click export, when you click in this drop down list, you will have a local drive here. It will say local space as in the drive letter. That will be your PC that you are on. If you're using iTiger and you save it to your local disk, here, that will be the Tiger server and you may not be able to open the file. So just please note that you may have to export it to the local drive here. So we've looked at our test call and we've seen what information has been given to us. So we've been given all the information now. We know that we're getting a hunt group information. You may be getting DNS information here. But all hunt group information ends up in this group one field. If this field isn't populated, there are some other possibilities that you could look at. You could look at the called original field, okay? So the called original field is the number that was originally dialed before it got to that number. So in this instance here, I can see that the original number dialed was 091, that it was missed at 091. I can see on the next call here that it was originally for 091, but actually was picked up at 085. So again, we could look at this field here as well to understand if the call's going into a hunt group, which number was originally dialed to get to that point. So again, how we got to this point was we've made our test call. We've generated our call detail report by selecting our date and our time. We found our call here, we right clicked on this call, and we found related calls. So now I understand what information I'm getting from the system, from the phone system and what it's providing to us. What we would look to do is filter upon those numbers because we're interested to know which calls go into our hunt group. So filtering on hunt groups can be done in two separate ways. The first way is under your query filters. So at the moment I have no query filters set up, so I'm going to look to build a query filter. To do this, I simply click on either the query editor here or at the top here. They both take you to the same place. I will then look to create a new filter and I will give this a name. So I'm going to call this and Group 91056. Once I've given this a name, we will create the filter in the standard way that we create all other filters. We will move from left to right, covering all tabs. You can give this filter a description. So when you come back to it, you know what this filter is for. So I can then click on my next tab, call information. Well, because it's calls coming into a hunt group, I would be looking at incoming calls, internal calls, and maybe some tandem incoming calls if that's how they get to the group. I wouldn't be interested in outgoing calls at this point. You could maybe look at calls over a particular ring time or over a particular duration. If you don't set any of these, though, all calls will appear in the report. 
If you're doing an investigation again, you may come in here and put a particular phone number to see whether a call comes from a particular phone number into that group. But the most important place is under the company structure. So how do I generate a report on a hunt group using this? Well, it's all controlled by this search by option in the bottom left hand corner. So to do this, we simply select what we want to search by. So when we search by, we can talk about extension, charge parties, i.e. the person that made a call, hunt group, what we're going to be um, talking about, physical extension, who the call was transferred from, who the call was transferred to, or the DNIS number. So in my instance here, I am interested in hunt groups. So I will select hunt groups from my drop down menu. I will then come up to the top right hand corner here and type in the number that I am looking for. So I'm interested in hunt group uh, 4414258910056. You can prefix it with a star, or if you're not sure what the start of the number is, you can put a star and leave the last three digits in there. To remove a hunt group, you simply highlight and click delete. So, as I said, we're now going to search by by selecting in the bottom left hand corner. And we're going to add the numbers in the top right hand corner here that we would like to search by. Now, I can go through these other tabs and decide if I want to add any of this additional information in here. But because I want to look at all calls going into the hunt group, I'm not really interested in looking at connected calls or busy calls at the moment. Now, later on, you may want to come in here and say, right, I want to know all the lost calls that have gone to that hunt group. So you may come in here and you may add, you know, no answers, no rings, refused calls, etc. But for now, I'm going to come back to my summary and it's going to tell me that I'm going to search by hunt group and I'm going to search for this particular hunt group number here. So when I click save, again it's going to give me the filter content here. And if I hover over my filter, again it will make sure that's what I'm going to select. Because now I want to now find out all calls that have gone to my hunt group, I'm going to simply right click on my calendar here and go to all day. And I'm going to extend my time range out to do it for two weeks, so the 1st to the 14th. I'm just at the moment still going to use the call information report, just so you can see the information it's going to return before we run a report. So I sort by date at the top here. You'll now see all calls that have gone into that particular hunt group. So if I come over to group field one, you will see group field one always contains that particular phone number or that particular hunt group. Okay, so I now know that that filter is working correctly because it's referring all calls into that hunt group. So if I'm doing forensic work, I now have a filter that allows me to look at all the itemized calls that have gone into that hunt group. So I can see which numbers have gone into that hunt group. Um, I can see which numbers are answering in that hunt group and I can see how long it's taken for people to answer the calls, whether they're not answering the calls, etc. here. So I'm now happy with my filter. The filter has returned all the information that I require. The trouble is having it in itemized format isn't really that good to go to say a manager, somebody's in charge of the hunt group. They won't want to see it in all this itemization um, unless they're doing a forensic investigation. What they would like is a nice report that gives them all of the high level information that they require to make sure that their team is performing correctly. So how can I do this? Well, Tiger has a full suite of reports that are available that you can run these filters against. So there are some specific hunt group reports. Now for all of you that don't have this option available, please send support an email 
we can get this enabled for you as soon as possible so you can run these reports. So what do these hunt group reports do? So if I look at the hunt group day analysis, now I need to make sure that my filter is enabled, otherwise it will give me all information. So you must apply a filter to this report. I then click generate and it will show me the date, the maximum number of simultaneous calls, so i.e. how many calls were presented to that hunt group at the same second. So what this means is do I have enough agents available to make sure that people are being able to pick up the phone in the good amount of time. How many calls were served to agents? So on this instance there was 22. You can see the weekend where there was no calls presented. The total amount of time spent in that hunt group for people and which agents are picking up the phone. So again, I've got this information here and it breaks it down for me to show which agents are answering the calls within that group. This is nice and simple information that you could provide to the hunt group manager. Now we can click on report in the bottom right hand corner here to actually generate a report. Although my hunt group numbers are quite long, they don't quite fit on the page here. It will give you useful information anyway about who's answering what calls into that hunt group. Now, this is by day. It may be that you want to look at this in an hourly basis. So I want to understand by hour how many calls are going into my hunt group. So I would select my hunt group time of day analysis and I would select a particular day or I may at 5 o'clock on that, a particular day schedule a report to run reports on calls for today. So I'm just going to select the 8th again and generate the report here. So I can see now at what time of day calls are being presented into my hunt group and how many calls were served to agents and which agent picked up those calls during those hours. So do we have enough agents there available for that hunt group to be able to serve the customers that are going into the hunt group? Again, you can then run this as a report here. Now these reports can be scheduled in the same way that all other reports can be scheduled by clicking as set as an auto report at the top here and then following the wizard through to set this as an automated report. Now, they are the two hunt group reports. These are specific hunt group reports for giving you information about how well the hunt group is working. Now, you may be interested in looking at inbound stats on those hunt groups. So what we could do is we could look at the extension answer performance report. Again, we're using our filter here to show what extension numbers came in and what the answer points were, how many calls were answered, how many calls were unanswered, and the breakdown then of time that those calls were answered or unanswered. So again, this report could be scheduled, and we know that these are calls that are going into the hunt group, they're not going to specific people. You may want to look at, say, a departmental call volume or a response time report. All of these reports are available with the hunt group as long as you filter upon the hunt groups within your query filter here. So you may have a, a report that you run for a particular department and what you've done at the moment is you've included all of the extension numbers for that hunt group in there. But actually what you really want to do is run it on the specific hunt group because if you run it on just extension numbers that will include DDI calls, internal calls, those specific extensions and not calls that are just destined for the hunt group. So how else can you get hunt group information? Well you can also do it through your quick filter here as well. So within your quick filter you also have the ability in here to search by hunt group or by DNIS numbers here or transferred to and transferred from numbers. So again, what you can do is you can type in the hunt group number. So I'm just going to change this for a second to say 85. 
Again, I'm just going to check my report is going to be okay by coming into my call information report. And I don't have any calls for that hunt group on that particular day. So maybe I extend the period to go and look to see whether there have been calls during, let's say, February for that hunt group. And there were no calls to that group during there. Oh, because I've sorry, I choose hunt group. Try that again. So again, I've chosen a slightly different hunt group. So I'm going to get slightly different stats from here. But again, I've come into my group field here and I can see that the group number is populated. The other thing that you may want to enable in here as well is your tiger linkage order. Your tiger linkage order will say which order the call came in on. So I can see that most of these calls here, the call hit the group on the second call. So this is where again I would look to find my related call to see what happens there. So I can see it's hitting a pilot number first, which then forces it into a hunt group. So again, using my quick filter, I may be able to come into my hunt group report and come into my hunt group day analysis again and generate my report on that data. And again, I can see which agents are picking up those particular calls. Now, one thing to note is that the agent answering the call is the hunt group number is the same as the agent number. Now, this is a configurable setting within your phone system. So with um, Cisco data, which is what we're looking at at the moment, there is an option to show either the hunt group number that answered the call or the agent that answered the call. So in this instance here, uh, this one was set with the hunt group to show the information and I changed it to show the agent information as well, just to give a bit of a mixture of calls. With the Avaya system, specifically the communication managers, again you have that option to either show the group number or the VDN number or the agents that pick up within that VDN. So when you look at your CDR configuration, you may have to look at that specific setting to see what is set at the moment and then go back to the business to understand what their requirements are. So as I've said, once you've filtered your report in here and you have your report here and you may have scheduled the report or you've exported the report, you can then provide that information to the business. Now, one thing also to note is security. So, unfortunately, within Tiger 2020 Pro, hunt groups are not secured, i.e., under the administer user access, there is no way of securing hunt groups. So, unfortunately, if you wanted to give access to a person within your business just for their hunt group information, unfortunately, that is not available within Tiger 20 Pro. What you will need to do is give them full access to all phone numbers or you will need to set them up a auto report to automatically deliver them that information. That is the best and most secure way of doing it. Now, what it may be is that you may have to deliver them the call information report. So you can do that. You can deliver them the CSV file which gives them all the information that they need and maybe that they'll write a macro within Excel to generate the data that they require. Maybe they need a particular graph to show how many lost calls to answered calls there are. So there is no way though at the moment of securing data for hunt groups. So it's just one thing to keep in mind within the business. One other point that you may look at under the report configuration here, some of the reports have settings that are available for those reports. So, for example, answer performance reports. Again, if you're looking at calls that are going into those hunt groups, we have two levels within the report. Now, in here, you can put your SLAs to make those reports specific to your company. So, maybe your SLA to answer the call is between maybe 30 seconds and level two is 60 seconds. So, you can change these values and these values will reflect within your report. It may be under the target response report. Maybe you want to exclude calls that are under a certain level. So again, you could say, don't show calls that are within under 20 seconds because we would have never have got to them anyway. 
Within your response levels here again, these are configurable fields of information that you can set to make sure that the SLAs that you have as a company are reflected within the report. Okay, so that's how to get information from Hunt Group. What I'm just going to do is just take two minutes quickly just to read through some of your questions and I will come back to you in two minutes. Okay guys, sorry about that. I was just quickly reading through all of the questions here that you've asked me. So I'm just going to go through as many of them as I can during the next sort of 15 minutes. So I think the most common question that I've been asked here is how do I get this Hunt Group section enabled? So to do this, what you'll need to do is either send myself an email. So the email will, is on the invite that you would have received from myself. And what I can do is I can get a ticket open on our support desk for you all to get this enabled. Um, it's a very quick thing for us to do to get those enabled. For anybody that's on a very old version of Tiger 2020 Pro, so you will need to be on at least version 5.2 and above. So you'll just need to check on your help and about that this version number here starts at least 5.2. If you've got anything less than 5.2, we may struggle to get the Hunt Group reports in on that version. So what I'll have to do is I'll take it up with a case-by-case -case basis and speak with your account managers to find out how we can do this in the best way. But as I say, enabling the actual report, yes, it's greyed out. And the reason it's greyed out is because we used to charge for Hunt Group reporting. So now as a company, we've decided that it will be part of the standard package. Therefore, it's quite a simple thing for us to do is to, to enable that for you. So the next question I had was under call information report here, Let's say that I've gone and changed my display columns here and I've enabled metered units and authorization codes. So when I click OK here, will those two columns be remembered next time I come back into this report? So if I exit out of this report, so I can see I have authorization code in this column here. If I close my report and I run it again, I right click and display columns, you'll see that it's remembered those settings. Now, there was a bug in earlier versions of 5.3 of the software. If you find that if you right click, display columns, and they're not remembered, there is a quick fix to this. Once you've enabled or disabled those columns, simply click on the report button here. It will pop up with this message here saying the data generated will not fit on a report. Well, that's clearly because you can't get 200 columns on an A4 page here, but what it's actually done is it's written all of those columns that you have selected to the database, okay? So it just does a fourth update of those columns to the database here. So next time that you do come in, it will remember those columns and it will remember what order the columns are in. Now, if for any reason the columns that you selected and you want to reset either everybody's or just yours, there is a, um, a restore defaults option here. And if you click on the restore defaults, what it will do is reset all the columns on all of the reports as well. There is also the option within the report to reset columns to default as well. So if you really do want to reset your columns back to your default, then you can right click set columns to default and it will reset all of the columns back to the standard set of columns that Tiger give in the first instance. So one of the other questions I was asked was in the Hunt Group report here and under the file number, sorry, the company structure. Unfortunately, you're not able to sort on this numbers range here. It is very difficult, and I know as, as you add many numbers into here, obviously this list here grows, but unfortunately there is no sort option available. It's something I can ask the developers. It's possible to do it, to add in the sort option here, 
but right at this moment in time, unfortunately, there is no search, there is no sort. So if you do have many, many numbers in this list, um, there is no way of sorting on here. One thing that you could do, you could come into your extension ranges here and have a look through here, but again, it doesn't really help you too much by having that list. If it is very long, there's not really much at this moment in time that we can do. So the other request there that was just asked um, <clears throat> was, yeah, you've seen that I'm running version 5.4. Unfortunately, 5.4 was a specific version written for a specific customer. Now we can upgrade you if you really want to, but it's not part of the standard support contract. You can contact your account manager and we could give you a price to upgrade you to 5.4, but there aren't that many benefits over 5.3. And um, there are a couple of minor bug fixes, but it was more specifically for a feature that one of our customers requested under this invoicing section here that you can see, which won't be available on any other systems apart from a specific customer we have because it was written specifically for them. Thank you for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and if there's anything else you'd like to learn about Tiger 2020 and its other features, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.